All right, so I'm just going to record the process here so that um, others can see how it works. First of all, the way I like to make a bridge is by having two points. It could be meshes, locators, or anything. And then I have a wooden plank and a post so that I can do something like scattering it along the edges here. Yeah, something like that. So the first thing I'm going to do, let me just select uh, the two points and I'll drag and drop them inside Graphene here. And then I'll call a get transform node. This node allows me to get their positions. And once I have their positions, I can use the node create line to create multiple points between them. To do that, I'm just going to type create line and I'll give it the positions, which is again, position A, position B. And um, if I just feed this here, nothing happens. And what I can do now is start instantiating the wooden plank here. So I'll just middle mouse drag and I'll call the node instance on points. So here it takes objects, which is the wooden plank and positions and uh, also rotations. So if I run this, we'll just have two wooden planks here. Oh, by the way, let me just rotate it. Actually, let's not be lazy and just do it here instead. There you go. Okay, so what I want to do now is select this node and make sure that let me deactivate that and enable resample points. And if I run it, now there's just so many that it looks like one plank, but let's change the distance to something like 25. There you go, 20, um, I don't know, 18. Yeah, I think this should be good, something like that. Oh yeah, by the way, um, disable preserve shape. In case, for example, you have more than two points, and uh, you don't want to keep the structure essentially of the initial points like you can essentially disregard this position and just average it so that can be uh, pretty useful um yeah i can run it again i usually like playing with this parameter until i get something that is just right and um, yeah this is good so next we have this guy i'm just going to drag and drop it here now this one, we obviously want to put it here. So one here and one there. And this is where the node parallel lines comes in really handy. Parallel lines takes a line, which is the line on which we've scattered these points and creates two lines that are parallel. One of them is here and the other one is there. So what we're going to do here is just create another instancer and let's just connect our wooden pose here and parallel lines has positions and rotations. So we just connect that. Um, if I run this, we should see something like that. And if we adjust the width to, I don't know, 60, we should see something like that. Um, now, I obviously want to have both of them connected. So I'll just create the node run here. I'll connect this one right there and here. And yeah, now they should both be running. Okay. so. Next problem I wanted to figure out is the width or radius of the wooden plank because I can use that as the width of parallel lines so that these two get right at the edge here. So we're just going to call the node radii, uh, get objects radii. And what we want to do is pass around the wooden plank and give it the max radii, which is the biggest plank. Uh, this node works with multiple planks. Um, so you can get the smallest or the biggest or all of them. Now, if you run it, I think we might want to play with the offset a bit. Uh, maybe minus 50, minus 60. Uh, yeah, this this is one of those nodes that the, the behavior actually with offset is off, uh, no pun intended. And uh, yeah, I think it it could benefit from some improvements. All right, so we have our bridge. Uh, next thing we want to do is apply some gravity. So for the gravity, we want to do it right here uh, on the first step. So let's just call the node gravity. And here is the node. It takes positions. Oh, before we give it the data of create line, we're just going to replace the connections from create line to gravity since we want to work with actual nodes with gravity. Same here, it takes line there. We want to replace it here. And 
it takes this guy positions and we have positions since we only have two points uh, let me just set the strength to six maybe yeah since we only have uh, two points we don't need to give anything to hold mask which essentially tells it hold these two points and drop every other point but if we had more than two then it would be let's say one in the middle then it would need to be a pattern like this so there you actually need to give it something to hold on to by default it just picks up the the two ends essentially and uh, what you could do is use the node uh, radius uh, actually radii get points in radii and what this node would do is it would look at the the points created by create line so we give it that and the original points which are the locators and if we give it this and we feed the mask to the hold mask nothing would change but now what you could do is have a third option locator here for example um, let's just select one two three and if we drag them here and connect that as you can see it's behaving properly uh, the rotation here is a bit off but you get the idea without this one it basically doesn't be uh, take into consideration anything in the middle so what this node does is it just looks at all the points generated by the line and the positions of the locators and it finds the closest locators within the lines and uh, yeah and then it just gives you a mask or actual positions um, but we don't need most of its behavior so we're just gonna delete all of that yeah so if I run it again this is what we're gonna get obviously you can disable uh, rotation here if you want to keep those straight um, but you could also have something like uh, some basic feature blending uh, by the way just hold alt shift a and it will align them uh, select the rightmost node alt shift a or go here automatic align and it will align them so the next step here is randomization you might want to randomize some properties here and uh, to do that we're going to need to play with the scale value so i'm just going to call the node random value and i'm going to set its property type to vector array which gives us xyz size here so we could say let's say for the size of the uh of the wooden pose here we want the minimum to be i don't know 0 0.8 for example on all axes or maybe only on the y-axis actually for the height and the maximum here could be 0 0.25 only on the y-axis so if we connect this to scales uh, the program will bug out because this is only one value by default uh, you need to give it a size it needs to know how many random values it needs to generate since you have positions you can use the node array size and this node will tell you how many positions there are and obviously any objects in any 3d software has as many positions as it has rotation scales or whatever you know just these guys essentially so if you connect that here this is what you'll see now and it's it's a bit extreme but uh, you get the idea we could go maybe with something like that yeah and same thing with rotation so you could just duplicate these Oh, you don't need that one actually so for the rotation I usually like to set it all to zero except the max y-axis I could set it to something like 180 and now let's connect it to rotations as you can see they're rotating there slightly obviously you can go like 45 and maybe here you want to put it to 10 and 10 and they'll rotate ever so slightly like that and uh, yeah I mean the rest is just maybe you want to expose a bunch of parameters like if you want to have it become interactive in Maya just right click on name here expose property okay and if we hit the export button and we go to the uh, graph and tools library you should have a name parameter here so here I'm just gonna select locator a locator B I'm gonna add it uh, I'll delete all of these different instancers because I don't need them and then I'll make sure that I'm in runtime mode and 
that's basically it. I mean, I can hit play, but yeah. As you can see, it's randomized because these guys have a random seed value. Um, but now I can select my locator and I can move it around and it's all uh, dynamic. And I could obviously just go back to the gravity node and expose something like the strength, for example. So let me just right click, expose. Maximum could be 30, minimum zero, yeah. And default would be 10. Now I'm just gonna send it again and I'm gonna click on the tool again. So if I just hit play again and tweak the gravity, this is what you'll see happening. And yeah, you can expose more parameters and so on. 